last video, we took a look at how the new doc type, meta, and script tag save us time when writing our HTML code. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the new tags available in HTML5. HTML5 includes tags that help us more accurately represent the content of our page. And you can see this in the new article, section, aside, header, and footer tags. Typically when we code pages, for instance a blog post, we would have a div that surrounds our blog post and perhaps some heading tags to separate each of the sections. So here we might have our post class and then we have some subheaders here. Now looking at the markup itself, it's difficult to tell which divs denote something interesting on a page like a single article or an aside. It can also be difficult to determine the grouping of sections in an article. Typically sections are denoted with heading tags with the content after it being considered sub-information of that heading. HTML5 introduces the article, section, and aside tag to help us define our syntax more accurately. Now right now browsers don't have any default styling rules for these new tags, so their use is entirely semantic, but you can style the tags yourself. Instead of having a div with the class article, you could just use an article tag. Again, that's largely a semantic change. We're going to be using this little blog page to demonstrate how to change some of our tags to utilize HTML5's new semantic tags. It's a simple blog with a header, some navigation, a sidebar, we have a post here with some sections in it, a, an image, you know, links to comments and footers and stuff like that. We'll be looking at how to use the HTML5 tags to make this page more semantic. First we're going to take a look at the article tag. An article tag represents a complete piece of content. The litmus test for whether an element should become an article tag is would this piece of content make sense if I pulled it out of the page and placed it somewhere else, for instance in another website or document? If so, it makes sense to use this as an article. Obvious applications of the article tags are news articles, blog posts, but other things that are appropriate for articles are things like blog comments, forum posts, and even widgets. So let's take a look at our source code. Well here we have a div class post. Now everything in this post is one large article. So we have a header, we have the body content, and we have some meta information down here. Now if we pull this all out, it would still make sense because we'd have a title, we could read it, and we could link to other places inside of it. So here our div that represents a post could be represented as an article because everything inside of it makes sense outside of the context of the page. So we name it article. Actually this was indented incorrectly there. And we just need to remember to go and make our closing tag also an article. Now if we look at the code on the page, we see that not much has changed. Like I said, most of this is largely semantic. Now I kept the class post on here because I want to differentiate between different types of articles on my page, and so this being a blog post, I kept this here. But you might get away with removing the class if it's superfluous, and you can style it just using the tag. Now besides our main article here, there are other things that can be considered articles. For instance, in our sidebar we have a couple of widgets, one being our blog role, now if we imagine this being placed somewhere else, it's a self-contained widget. It has a header and it has its content. It doesn't need the rest of the page for context. So it could be argued that these two are articles. So we'll change these to an article. And as well as this popular post is another widget, so we can change this to an article. And so we just got rid of a few more divs, and so now it's starting to make a little more sense. We see, you know, there's an article here, so this is a self-contained piece of information as well as this. Now a section is a bit like an article, but a bit more generalized. Sections are great to use inside of articles to divide up content. Each section might contain a headline tag and some content inside of it. So back in our article here, we had a couple sections inside of our actual post. So we have this introductory section, so we might call this a section, all the way down to our first subheader here. And now, because there's a subheader here, we're probably assuming that all this information from the bottom down is another section. So first let's indent this just a little bit, just to be more clear. And so now we can clearly see the different parts of our article. So we can see this section here has a paragraph with some images and some text. And here's another section. So if we were able to parse this document, we could see where the section breaks are. Now, a section tag typically doesn't have to make sense in isolation like an article does. 
It should, however, describe a meaningful section of the page, for instance, a chapter of a book, a section of an article like our blog post here, or even a logical section of a page, for instance, the list of articles. So if we go up here and we see we have a div that has ID of posts, this could also be a section because it's describing our section that lists all the posts on our page. So let's go down here. And actually this was the end of our article. And this was the end of our div, which we're now recalling a section. So you can see that how easy it is to get lost in your markup when everything is a div. So now we can see that this is actually the end of our article and this is our section. So we're using fewer divs and more meaningful tags. Now, when we're writing content, often tangential comment like side notes or clarification is needed. We have this here. This paragraph is actually describing something about the article itself and could actually be removed from the article and still have the article make sense. But I still want to have it in here as an aside. Now, we can actually use HTML5's new aside tag for this. And since I just had a class aside on it, I'm probably just going to want to remove the class on it. So this says this content inside of here doesn't really fit into the main flow of the page, but it's still useful information. Now the browser won't necessarily style this any differently right now, but what you might want to do is something like a pull quote or make the text lighter and give it less contrast. Now since the aside just means that it's non-critical information on the page, it has more use than just inside of articles. If we have an aside outside of the page, it means that it's secondary information on the page. So for instance, our sidebar could fit under that definition, so we could also have this be the aside. Now understand I used aside to describe that it's secondary information on the page, not necessarily because it's on the side of the page. The tags don't necessarily tell you how it will be styled, and you shouldn't put something in an aside tag just because it's on the side. You should use it because it's secondary information on your page. Now we've seen how the article, section, and aside tags allow us to make our content more organized. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how to organize the hierarchy of our page using age groups. Mm -hmm.